hello television audience at home, or whatever they used to say on the, on the on Dick Sullivan. It's Ed Sullivan show, not that I'm Ed Sullivan. Um, so, uh, this section deals with Bach and Handel, probably the two biggest names of the Baroque era, both fairly late composers in the Baroque era, and um, you want to get a, to know a little bit about them. Um, I'm going to ask on the assignment for this week, I'm going to ask everyone to um, describe a little bit about their their lives and careers. Now, when I do that, I'd really like you to to self-edit a little bit because it's very easy to transfer material from the book to the page, but that's not very it's not very helpful. It's not very interesting. So when I say self-edit or self self um, sieve a little bit, look for stuff that's either a important or b interesting. And that's a judgment call. The fact that Bach had 20 children with two wives is perhaps not so important, but it might be interesting. And so it's something, one of those things that you might want to uh, put in. mentioned, too, that only four of those 20 preceded him. Yeah, yeah. Only four of them became musicians. But of those four, um, several of them became very important musicians. Um, C.P.E. Bach, for example, really is credited for a major role in starting a new style, the classical style, which we're going to start next week. So his son, and most of his sons at that time thought he was kind of old-fashioned. His you know, dad was doing all this polyphonic stuff you know, that we were studying last week, and we'll be studying today a little bit. Um, and so the, the new style, this is what cool people did now, dad. You know? and, then, and in fact, in the classical age, Bach the elders, the father's music, got lost. I mean, nobody listened to it anymore. And that was kind of common in those days. I mean, the fact that we listened to Bach, who composed 300 years ago, in those days was unthinkable. You didn't listen to old music. That was a new thing that came up in the 19th century. We'll talk about that later on. But so as you, as you reread, read and reread about Bach and Handel, look for stuff that you think is really interesting or important. Those two things. Don't put down material just because it's there. The fact that they were born in the same year is kind of interesting. And maybe important because it places them in time. Okay. Yeah. So is that going to be the only thing we have to write about? Like, no, alas. It's going, to be okay. a, it's going to be another one of these relatively long um, uh, putting together of things. Um, one of the reasons for this is it's very hard, I think, in a course like this where some of you are online and some of you are on the ground, to know what to look for. And so I think if I... If I um, give you a kind of paragraph by paragraph assignment, say look for it. the first paragraph will be uh, this, you know, so those two composers. Um, those could be pretty hefty paragraphs, but, and then we'll get into the music. With regard to the music, we want to get, and this is for everybody online as well, um, we want to get a little deeper into the music. We want to be able to say not only this was really cool, not only this was really cool, and I feel the, you know, for example, in Vivaldi, I feel the louds and the softs and the louds and the softs, but that I notice in section, in the first section, or at minute one, second 20, you know, one deck, or deck, uh, colon 20, something happens to describe that something. Right? So that we get a little bit <coughs> closer into the details of the music. Now, you don't have to do that for the whole piece, obviously. That would take you forever. But that's what we're after. We don't want just general impressions, um, because that you could do on your own. But what, what we want to do is to be able to get inside the music and say, okay, uh, I just learned that this is right here, this is polyphony. Or that, where the organ goes and then plays over the top of it, that's called a pedal point. And that gives the piece gravity, and that happens at 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Right, which means I looked for it, I found it, I heard it, and I put it down on paper. And that's really what we need to do in order to... And you know, obviously, you're not going to get everything. <laughs> Nobody does. Even music majors in college don't get it all. But to find something, to look for something specific that you weren't able to identify before, that you weren't able to hear before, or that you weren't able to name before, that's really helpful. Okay? And that's where we want to go. So let's try to go a little farther into the music this time, this week, and see if we can get a little closer to it. Um, does somebody, can somebody do this sort of off the cuff? There were two ways of making a living 
in the Baroque era, in the 17th century, basically. I mean, there are probably more, but in, as a musician, as a composer. And Bach, for the most part, did one, and Handel, for the most part, did another. Can you, does anyone have that in your pocket? Um, Bach spent most of his career in the church, right? Um, he didn't spend it all there. He spent a good, what was it, 16 years? I forget how many years he was at Kruten as a court composer. He worked for the nobleman, for a king, or for a prince. Um, and that's where the Brandenburg Concerti happened, right? He wrote that for their court. So if you, if you were a, a nobleman and you had a palace and you had your, your government responsibilities, one of the things you also did was to hire an orchestra, perform for your people, sometimes for the populace, but not really so much. It was mostly for the court and for the noble classes, right? And so that was one way of earning a living, and that you got paid then by the king or by the prince or by the, the Herzog. Um, the other way uh, is the church. And did, I, did I just church? church? I started with the church, right? I just, so one of them was, a, one was through the, the noble, uh, a noble, uh, nobleman appointment, and the other one was a church appointment. Bach did both. Um, but for the most part, he spent most of his career in the church. And in, in Leipzig, in the city of Leipzig, he was responsible for four churches. And um, one of those pieces that we wrote, we're going to listen to today, rather, um, the uh, Bach Cantata 140 was one of his pieces. And the amazing thing for Bach, I just can't even imagine this, we performed this at, at the church, at First Congregational Church in Sheboygan two years ago, and I conducted it. And it took us about four months to prepare it, you know, and get the orchestra together and get for the for the, the choir to learn it and so forth. Bach had to write one of these, rehearse it, and perform it every week throughout his career. So a 20 minute, 25 minute piece with orchestra, choir, soloists, and so on. It took us four months to get it together. He had to do it every single week, one, and he had to write it and it's just amazing. I mean, the, the amount of you know, energy that must have gone into that is just astounding. So, didn't they make mention, too, that each uh, <coughs> church service back then was four hours? <laughs> yes, yeah. They didn't mess around when they went to church. Yeah. Um, if you've ever been to Trinity UCC, the black church in the, on the south side of Chicago, where Barack Obama actually was a member there, um, I, we, went, we used to take our young people down to that church because it's the same denomination as the church that we were in, Sheboygan. And those, those went two to three hours too, so they, they, you know, it, was, it was pretty exciting actually, it's pretty cool, but that church, <laughs> it's the same level of energy in a, a Lutheran's, Lutheran sermon, a Lutheran's service in the 17th century. But anyway, so take a look at those two careers a little bit. One of the fast, that's just one little detail I think is fascinating about Bach. Um, how important it is, I'm not sure, but it's interesting. One of the also not terribly important detail about Handel, which also is very interesting, Handel was born in Germany, of course, like uh, Bach, actually sort of right down the road in the same year. They never met, um, but uh, Handel's career went in a very different direction. He worked, for the most part, for the, the elector, which is a prince, really, a nobleman of Hanover in Germany. Hanover is a city in central Germany, right in the middle now, and now that Germany's been reunited. That nobleman was Georg, was his name, and um, he, uh, at one point, Handel asked for a leave of absence so he could go and work in, in London, because London was a real happening place if you're a professional musician. And the Prince of, of Hanover let him have that um, vacation. I think he stayed for two years the first time. I can't remember exactly. I have to look that up again. And then came back and then applied again and went back to, to England to work for the, actually for the king of England. And while he was there, the king of England died. And the successor to the throne of England was his old boss from Germany. And why, how is that possible? Well, you know, if all the noblemen of Europe were interrelated. You know, they, they, all the cousins married each other. The king, the cousin from Germany, one of the prince of Hanover, a princess of Hanover, married the king of England's prince, uh, son, who was the prince of Wales, and and so 
the successor to the throne. So King George was actually of England, had a German accent, and he became Handel's new boss when he became King of England, moved from Hanover to London, <laughs> and was his old boss was again his new boss. I, I love these fun, weird details of history. Um, but Handel made his career there, and that's why when we listen to Messiah, you know the great piece, Messiah, that's played practically every other year in the Schweizer Schweizer Symphony? It's in English, even though it was written by a German. It was written in London for the British throne and in English. Okay, make sense? Mm -hmm. So those are those, that, I mean, those are just two little nutshells, but that's something to kind of watch for as you look at these two careers and anything else that you can find that's interesting. So that's your first paragraph for next week. I will try to, by the way, this is a detail, housekeeping detail. I will try to get the up the upload of the assignment thing working by tomorrow. So I figured that out. I've got a I've got a um, a video that's supposed to explain this to me. You said each paragraph should be like five, six, seven sentences. Or how long do you? Yeah. Want well, that? you know, um, it's a really good question. Actually, I the the rule of thumb, which is not real satisfying, I know, in your, when you're sitting in your seat, is is you keep writing until you feel like you've exhausted the point, right? Okay. But that's not a, all, always easily dis, you know, dis, decided. You don't want it to be so short that it feels like you really haven't said something yeah. substantive, but you don't want to pile so much stuff in there that it starts really dragging on and it feels like you're filling it out, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what you're talking about. I think in a case like this, when you're comparing those two composers, probably something like that is okay. Okay. Um, and maybe that turns into two paragraphs. I don't care about that. You, know, you have to think about the mechanics of it. Okay. When you're talking about a, a composition, again, it depends a little bit on what it takes you to get through it with the kind of detail you want to be holding. Right? Um, I'm going to try to push us for a little more detail than we've been having. Generally speaking, and I'll add, I'm not speaking to everybody here, but uh, generally speaking, I want to push for a little bit more detail when you talk about the music. And so that. That's why I started out by saying look in the listening guides and maybe listen at once or twice to the lectures as we go through the music in the class. So, yeah, I'm not sure how helpful that is, yeah. but yeah. yeah. And of course, time is also an issue. You know, you only have so much time in a week. Okay, now let's go to the first. Why don't we cut it there for a moment? And that'll be our